This is 3.2 day four, computer output and regression to the mean. There's an SEC football example on the page before this one, but I'm gonna leave that example to you since you should have all the tools you need uh, to solve it on your own. So we're gonna start on this page with interpreting computer regression output. It says a number of statistical software packages produce similar regression output. Be sure you can locate a few specific things, starting with the slope, the y-intercept, the value of s, remember that's the standard deviation of the residuals, and the value of r squared, our coefficient of determination as it's called. And then once you understand the statistical concepts, you can read and work with almost any software output. So that's encouraging. Okay, so here's some software output for the SEC example from the previous page. It says identify the values for slope, y-intercept, s, and r-squared. So in the SEC example, points per game was on the x-axis. So if we align the points per game row here with its coefficient, the coefficient on the x value is always the slope. So our slope would be 0.4 three seven two one this value and then the constant term is always the y-intercept so our y-intercept then would be negative three point seven five one and then s although it's not lowercase would be this value right here so that's our standard deviation of the residuals last but not least hopefully it's kind of obvious to you again and I know it's not in lowercase here, but this would be our r squared value, which is our coefficient of determination. We don't need this r squared adjusted thing. You can pretty much throw that out for this class. In fact, at this point, we can pretty much ignore all this other stuff. We found the slope, the y-intercept, s, and r squared. So it outputs a lot more things that at this point in time we don't need. Okay, and if we look down here at example three, uh, it still uses the same SEC football data, but this is a different stat software or different output from a different stat software it's called JMP. So let's point out uh, those key values again. For starters, R squared is the very first thing. And that's the same value for R squared that we saw above. R squared adjusted, we don't need. But then if we look at the next item here, it says root mean square error. So if we think about that, root is referring to square root, mean is the average, and then square error is talking about the residual squared. Remember, the residual is sort of like our, our error when we make predictions. So this is actually referring to the value for s, the standard deviation of the residuals. Uh, N would be the sample size here, right? observations. So that would be 12 observations for the 12 teams in the SEC. Our y-intercept, right? it says intercept, and then there's the estimate. <clears throat> and then estimate that goes with points per game, that would be our slope. Okay, so the next page has an example about Mentos and Diet Coke. Maybe you have or haven't done this experiment or you're familiar with it. It says when Mentos are dropped into a newly opened bottle of Diet Coke, carbon dioxide is released from the Diet Coke very rapidly, causing the Diet Coke to be expelled from the bottle. Will more Diet Coke be expelled when there's a large number of Mentos dropped in the bottle? Two statistics students, David and Rachel, decided to find out. Using 16-ounce or 2-cup bottles of Diet Coke, they dropped either two, three, four, or five Mentos into a randomly selected bottle, waited for the fizzing to die down, and measured the number of cups remaining in the bottle. Then they subtracted this measurement from the original amount in the bottle to calculate the amount of Diet Coke expelled in cups 
Output from a regression analysis is shown below. So plot here, see the results from when they put two Mentos in, or three Mentos, or four Mentos, or five Mentos. So there's a positive association. Basically, the more Mentos they put in, the more uh, Diet Coke was expelled. And there's the residual plot for the same data. So part A says, what is the equation of the least squares regression line? Define any variables you use. And here's uh, the computer output that goes with it. So we can start with Mentos was the x value. So the coefficient on the x value would be our slope. And then the constant term would be our y-intercept. So uh, we could say y hat equals, and our y-intercept is 1.00208 plus our slope times x. And if you want to put that in front of the y-intercept, that's totally fine also. If you're more comfortable writing y equals mx plus b, the order won't matter. Uh, we do have to define any variables we use. So in this case, we have to say for y hat, represents the predicted, that's the key word there, y hat represents the predicted amount of Diet Coke, and x is the number of Mentos that were dropped in. Part B, what's the correlation? So that's r. We're not given r here. We are given r squared, though. So to get r, we would just have to take the square root of that value and make sure we get the correct sign, whether it's positive or negative. So if r squared is 0 0.602 as a decimal, the square root of that would be about 0.78 for our r value. And just to be clear, this is positive because the scatter plot showed a positive association. So part C asks, is a linear model actually appropriate for this data? Explain. Well, if we look back at the residual plot, that's exactly what this question refers to. Is the residual plot OK? Does it show a random scatter of points, or does it seem to show like some curved or some weird pattern? And I know these points are kind of stacked up here, but you should expect that because there are only a few options for Mentos, two, three, four, or five. So the fact that they're stacked up, that doesn't imply that there's a pattern, right? There's still a random scatter around that residual equals zero line. So when you see a question like this, is a linear model actually appropriate? That is really asking you to refer to the residual plot. In this case, yes, a linear model is appropriate because the residual plot shows a random scatter about the horizontal or the residual equals zero line. Okay, so what about part D here? It says, what percentage of variation in the amount of Diet Coke lost can be accounted for by the least squares regression line relating the amount of Diet Coke lost to the number of Mentos dropped into a bottle of Diet Coke? So that's a really long question just to ask you about what R squared is, right? the coefficient of determination. What's R squared? So when you see a question that says, what percentage of variation and then it gives you the context. That's referring to R squared. So as a percentage, we can say R squared is 60.2%. All right, and then the last item on this page, part E says if the amount expelled was measured in ounces instead of cups, how would the values of R squared and S be affected? So if we change the unit of measurement, if we measured it in ounces instead of cups, how would R squared and S be affected? Well, we know R squared would stay the same because it doesn't have any units. So if you change the units of measurement, it won't matter. R squared doesn't have any units. Similarly, the R value, the correlation coefficient, wouldn't be affected either. So R and R squared would stay the same. So no change for R squared. But S would actually be changed, right? The standard deviation of the residuals would actually be changed because it carries units. 
So S would be changed because it carries the same units as the Y variable. So if we think about the standard deviation of the residuals, when we say on average how far off we are in our predictions, we predict so one cup is actually equal to eight ounces. So we could just multiply the standard deviation by the absolute value of eight, well, which is just eight, right? So a fancy way to say, if you change the units, multiply it by the absolute value of whatever the unit change is. So our S value was 0 0.0672442, just take that and multiply it by eight. So the new standard deviation, if we convert this to ounces, would be 0.537-9536 ounces. Moral of the story, if you change the units of measurement from cups to ounces, R squared and even R would not be affected, but S, the standard deviation, would be affected. Least squares regression from summary statistics. So there's actually a way to come up with the LSRL if you know um, some of the statistics about the data, like the mean of the X values, the mean of the Y values, um, and a couple other things. So you don't actually need to um, just put the data in your calculator and have it calculated for you that way uh, if you know those actual values, if you know the summary statistics. So the first blank there, it says using technology is often the most convenient way to find the equation of the least squares regression line. But it's also possible to calculate the equation um, using only the means and standard deviations of the two variables in their correlation. So really convenient to use the calculator sometimes if you just have the list of data. But even if you don't have the list of data, you can still calculate the LSRL with just the means and standard deviations of the two variables, X and Y, and their correlation. And then the note here, the least squares regression line always go through one specific point. You know one point for sure will be on that line, and that's the point X bar, Y bar. So the mean of the X's and the mean of the Y's. That's a coordinate point that will always be on the LSRL. It'll always go through that point. Uh, using the track example as a reference, this would be like the mean sprint time, and that would be like the mean long jump distance. So as a coordinate point, that would be on the LSRL for sure. Okay, and then the definition here. How do we actually calculate the least squares regression line using those summary statistics? So we have data for an explanatory variable, that's the x, the response variable y for n individuals, and then from the data, we calculate the means and the standard deviation of the two variables and their correlation. Okay, so this is kind of really just summarizing what we just talked about here. So explanatory variables x, response variables y, n is kind of basic, that just always refers to how many people or how many um, subjects or in the sample, or the experiment, what have you. Equation of a least squares regression line. Don't forget it's a hat on the y, so y hat equals a plus bx. So a is our y-intercept, b is our slope. That's the number on the x. So here's how you find these things. The slope, you can calculate b, the slope, if you have r, which is the correlation, notice the color code, and that's times this fraction right here, S sub Y over S sub X. So that's the standard deviation of the Y variable over the standard deviation of the X variable. And don't worry about like trying to calculate those individually, those will be given to you, and you just have to show you could come up with um, the B value. Okay, so that's for the slope, and then if you want to get the Y intercept, that's A, that's the mean of the y values minus b, which is actually the slope of the line, times the mean of the x values. So you can get the slope and the y-intercept of the regression line just using this info right here. Not putting it in L1 and L2. So no data entry into the calculator even required. But that's assuming you know 
these special values. Okay, and the great thing about these formulas is you don't have to memorize them. So the, these two formulas actually are on the AP formula sheet that you get on our exams and the AP exam. Um, they just look a little bit different. So uh, the slope, for example, that's B sub 1 equals R, and then the fraction, standard deviation of Y divided by standard deviation of X. So the only thing different there is they call it B sub 1. And then the Y-intercept, um, instead of calling it A, they call that B sub 0. And then obviously the B sub 1, that means the slope. Uh, and why do they use that? Well, the equation of the LSRL, least squares regression line on the formula sheet, remember that's B sub naught for the y-intercept, or not B, you could call it B naught or B sub 0. Um, and then B sub 1 was the slope. So that's, that's the reason behind why they call it that. Okay, so now let's actually take these and apply it to the example. So we're going to use feet to predict height. It says a random sample of 15 high school students was selected from the U.S. Census at School database, the foot length in centimeters and height in inches of each student in the sample were recorded. The mean and standard deviation of the foot lengths are X bar equals 24.76 and S sub X equals 2.71. Okay, so we got those values. The mean and standard deviation of the heights, we got Y bar and S sub Y. And then we have the correlation too. That's 0 0.697. So we're going to find the equation of the LSRL using only that information. So which one should we find first, the slope or the y-intercept? And in this case, like you have to find the slope first because, um, well, for one, the slope formula depends. Well, the y, or excuse me, the y-intercept formula depends on the slope. Like you actually need the slope to calculate it. So we're going to find the slope and the y-intercept for this line. Um, I also forgot my hat here. Let me add a little hat on my y. There we go. So the slope. Let's calculate that first. So b equals, I need the correlation, r, and then times the standard deviation of y over the standard deviation of x. So we have those values, or we have those values right in front of us. So in red there, correlation, 0.697, standard deviation of y, standard deviation of x. So calculate that, 2.75. And make sure you're showing these calculations um, for test credit and for AP exam credit. So you will have to just outline like what you plugged in. So that's part of your evidence. That's how you show your work. So now we got the slope. We just need the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, A, mean of the y's minus the slope times the mean of the x's. So we have all three of those variables now. Mean of the y's minus the slope times the mean of the x's. And you do have to outline this again. So to receive credit or full credit, you've got to show your work there. And that equals... 103.34. So last but not least, when I put this into my equation and I, I say y hat and x, I'll just replace whatever a and b are with their actual, their actual values that we found here. But let's, um, let's say what y hat is, let's say what x is. So we kind of have to define our variables and give it some context. So our result, we have the equation of the LSRL. Which one? the LSRL that predicts height, which is our y hat, based on foot length, which is our x. So that's our context. The equation of this LSRL is what? Hey, how's it going? AV guy just came here and fixed my projector, so major thumbs up to him. Uh, put the A value correctly, B value correctly, slope and y-intercept, um, and there's your line. That's it for these notes. I will see you in class.